Hi, and welcome to another one of my classic clicks videos. I'm trying to share some of the things I've learned from listening to the great electric blues guitar players from the 40s, 50s, and 60s, and show you some licks and ideas that can help you both figure out the playing of these people, if that's what you want to do and that's how you want to learn, but also to help you get some ideas that you can work into your own play to make it more interesting. And that's what I try to do. I try to listen to all these people and then take what I learn and make it into my own style. Today we're going to look at one of the greatest guitar players ever in both jazz and, and blues and swing, Bill Jennings. And Bill Jennings was a guitar player, probably the most famous person he played with was Louis Jordan. He had a short period where he was in Louis Jordan's band in the late 40s, early 50s, I'm not sure exactly when. And he also had a long career as a session man, a side man, and a solo career. And Bill Jennings is really a jazz guitar player, and so many of his ideas come out of jazz. Now I'm no jazz guitar player, and I'm just learning. I'm trying to learn some of that stuff, the chords and playing over the chords, and a lot of those ideas. There's a guy named Tommy Harkenrider out in California. He does a great job of teaching this jazz stuff from Bill Jennings, Tiny Grimes, and and many others. What I'm going to try to do is just show you some simple Bill Jennings ideas that anybody can approach and you can use in blues playing without really needing to understand the chord changes and, and things like that. Just simple 1-4-5 progressions or maybe something a little more complicated. And these are ideas that I just like. You know, there's no catalog on which Bill Jennings licks were the best or most important, but these are some that I just picked up listening to his stuff recently and studying it. And these are ideas, again, that I use in my blues playing when I play with a small group or even when I play with a bigger group. Let's start out with double stops. And Bill Jennings, in a lot of his playing, he uses these double stops. And if you haven't learned these before, I'm going to show you just some basic ideas for the use of double stops. If you haven't, if you know this already, then you can just fast forward or skip ahead. But if you don't know this, if you're just getting started into this kind of plan, this is a really cool idea that you can use in a lot of different ways. And when I start showing you some of the Bill Jennings licks, you'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about. Let's use the key of G. So we're going to start out of a whoops, first G bar chord position. And a lot of our licks are going to be based on this. So here's a G. With the double stops, the way that Bill Jennings does it so often, he's going to play these on the first and second strings. And I'm not a very musically sophisticated person. I'm trying to learn more and get better at this, but I memorize little helping points, trick points, cheat, cheat points, you might call them. And one of mine is the double stops. My reference point is always the, the, the one chord and the second, second bar chord position. So second position bar chord. So here's what I mean. Here's my G, which is my one for my song. If I go all the way up here, I've got a G second position bar chord. I've got my first finger on the tenth fret of the fifth string. My ring finger is flattening out the second, third, and fourth strings. So that's my reference point. Now if I take my first and third fingers, put my first finger on the tenth fret of the first string, and my ring finger on the twelfth fret of the second string, I get this. And that is a double stop in G. So if I'm playing in G, I can do all kinds of cool stuff with that, with that lick. Now, when you move these, when you slide these, and that's what Bill Jennings does so often, and you can, there's kind of a pattern. Maybe I'm wrong on this. You guys who are more musically in touch than I am, you can correct me. But this is the way I understand it. You guys who are simple, like me. So basically, this is the first shape. And there's two shapes. The first shape and a second shape. That's how I remember it. This is my first shape. So I take that and I can go down two frets. And it works. So and I can play a lick like that. But you'll see I've got bigger things in mind. So we go there, two frets, and then here we got our first finger on the seventh fret of the first string, 
This is the second position. And my second finger is on the seventh or on eighth fret of the second string. Now that position with those two fingers, you may recognize that as a partial D shape. So here's a D shape G chord. Those are all G chords. So there's my D, and all I'm doing is playing this part of it. And I'm using my first and second finger instead of my second and third. You could play it like that if that's more comfortable. I usually play it like this. Each one of those in itself can almost be a lick, and I'll show you some examples here in a little bit. So here we go so far. And then, two more. Same, that's my second position. So the rule is two, two, two. You change positions every two frets. So here's change, change, and you've got this whole range of things that you can that you can do with these uh, double stops. You can even go on the second and third string, but we'll stay away from that. And then going the other way, going down. And, and here, when you go from the 7th and 8th frets to the 5th and 6th, you can just go one, you can like do one, one step in between. And I'll show you a Bill Jennings lick here in a minute where he does something like that. Now going the other way, here's what I did. So from our one chord, I went to that second position on the 12th and 13th fret. And then here, which is a G7. So like this, on the first, this is a G7 too. So I've got that, I've got that. See where I'm getting with all this. We've got a lot of possibilities, a lot of puzzle pieces that we can put together in lots of different ways. Now yes, I'm going to get to the Bill Jennings stuff here in a little bit, but these are the, the concepts behind it, especially for people who are new to this kind of guitar playing. So the double stops are great. And the thing I love about Bill Jennings' playing is he, he plays these magnificent single string rhymes, but then he got these cool double stops, he's got little trills and slides and all sorts of different things. If you want to hear a guitar player today who I think sounds you know, maybe the most like Bill Jennings, Junior Watson out in California, and a lot of guys will agree with this, he, you know, a lot of his playing comes from Bill Jennings, Tiny Grimes, and some of these jazzier blues players. So anyway, let's, uh, let's take a Bill Jennings lick, and this is from a tune Oh, I have to look at my screen. It's called Bluegrass, and this is a, a jazz type of instrumental that he does. And he does something like this. He's playing in the key of G. He starts out with... Starts out with that G7. First finger on the 13th fret of the first string. Ring finger on the 15th fret of the second string. And he does something like... So he starts out, and then the song goes into the four. So he's playing this over the G or the one. So it's can't remember the exact melody, but so I'm just following that same pattern I just showed you a minute ago. So from 12th fret, first string, 13th fret, second string, then to our one. Two, so two frets, two frets down, second position at the eighth and, sorry, seventh and eighth frets, two more, actually this is where we go one step, or we could go all kinds of things. So that's a, a simple idea. Jennings type lick. 